another work break, another estate sale. I'm at an estate sale really close to where I work, so perfect time to take a nice lunch break. No parking on the street where the house is at, so I had to park the block over, but it's called a Digger's Delight sale. So let's see what digging we can do. <laughs> take a number. The crowds. Oh, take a number. That's a pretty nice desk. That's a really nice desk, actually. Back upstairs. Oh, look how large this attic is. This is huge. There's a lot of books here. There's another guy that looks to my paper, so I'm gonna need to get through this as soon as I can before he gets up here. Competition. I'll put that in my bag. These are so cute. Let's see what else we can find. Gripper walking shoes, Providence, a level. Those hooks are always great. Ball. Oh, is that a, I don't know if that is a fossil, maybe? Chandelier. 
all sorts of stuff. I saw one guy walking out with brass. Anything? goes even back over there. This would be a great work attic. Attic. So whomever lived here must have been an engineer because all the books. A lot of book. I don't know. Is it a sensor? Probably something. For something. We know it works. Not a bad estate sale, a pretty clean estate sale. I loved that basement with the huge fireplace. That was great. And then the attic, that went on forever. Both the attic and the basement, I think, would have made really nice offices or working spaces and they were both pretty clean when you go into an attic you are usually used to it being dark dusty dirty or lots of cobwebs lots of dust that was not the case there were just boxes and boxes of books the man of the home that had lived in that house he most likely was some type of engineer because there were a lot of electrical engineering books those I can't really reuse or repurpose in any way. If they would have been vintage medical books or books that had, I guess, more interesting illustrations and text inside, then I definitely would have purchased some. But I still came back with a couple of books after digging through the attic and I paid a whopping $7 for all of these, which I think is, in, is an amazing price because at my local flea market, it probably would have been between 10 to 15, maybe even $20 per book. So the first ledger, a double entry ledger, this is actually blank. It is not filled in yet, which is really great. You can't go wrong with a vintage ledger. And then I picked up two older ledgers. First, this little one. 
lots of different types of writing. Some pages are falling out. There are names at the top. Then of course with the monies down below, this looks like it is shopping. You have bacon, 33 cents, sugar, crisps, snuff, um, honey, thread, lots of bacon on here. They must have like bacon eggs. So yeah, it looks like pickles, beans, so definitely some type of ledger in association with food. Maybe if it's from a little store or though there are different names at the top. This is Elijah, Henry. So perhaps this was a, you know, a, a general store that they went and they purchased all these items from. Pretty neat. This one is full. So I'll have to look through here and see what there is, if there's anything hidden in the pages. Then this one, another great ledger. This did have things in here, which I haven't looked at. North American Accident Insurance Company. You see the insurance papers, Metropolitan Life, all of these everywhere. This is from 1930. Cash or sympathy? Which would you prefer in case of sickness or accident? $25 a week or sympathy? $10,000 in cash or sympathy? $10 for a year's protection. I think they're trying to make their case there. Who will pay your bills when accident or sickness lays you low? Kind of appropriate now with what we're experiencing in the world. Out of the fog came disaster. Another accident or sickness policy. I don't think they advertise quite like that for our insurance policies today. So yes, I think these are all <laughs> this is an example of a check. Hattie Hoffman, widow and beneficiary, $11,250. So I'll have to look through that. But yes, yeah, so another ledger, same thing, great handwriting. Looks like it's the same type of content. Soap, candy. Five cents for candy. <laughs> so very interesting. I, I don't know. Oh, what's this? I don't know if I'll be able to find out what exactly it was for. Maybe there's a name somewhere in there. That's pretty that I can see because I would like to know exactly what type of store and where it was. Oh, West Virginia. Let's see what the letter says. Miss Davis, kind lady, your letter at hand. And Nate, what you say, that doesn't make sense, concerning my account. Yes. I have given you $5 on my account several times. I have all receipts, but one from you, and I would like some settlement with the books before I pay any more for there surely is not much back yet. This is great. This will help me figure out where this was from because this book is not from the state that I found it in because of where the letter is sent to. Perfect. More historical research, just what I need. But that will be fun. Another easy way to figure out where this, if I didn't have this letter, okay, if I didn't have this letter with the town and the state, what else I could do is I do have a membership to Ancestry.com. Froze. <laughs> I could easily look up some of the names. And this is dated 1906, so I could devise from there too. So there are many different ways to go about researching. So all those letters, three letters for $7. And then in the garage, I picked up this tin. It was $2. Lubric Grease, Philadelphia. I liked the colors, high heat and low cold test. It's not worth a lot. I, I did take a look on eBay. I think there's one up there now for $14 or best offer, but I didn't buy it to resell. I bought it because I really liked the colors. They were nice and bright. 
and red, white, and blue. So it would be good for 4th of July, for the summertime. You can always reuse tins for many things. You can just display them how they are. You can use them as kind of um, props or little ledges to put other items on. And then you can even use them as planters. If you don't have a green thumb, like myself, you can always put fake plants in these, succulents, fake succulents would look really good in the tins. So there are many different things you could use these for. You just have to use your imagination. So I spent a total of $9 and I was very happy. It was a, an easy estate sale to go through. Not a lot of people, not a lot of pressure to, to dig and get to things first. So I was glad for that. And I found some paper and a neat tin to add to my holiday decor. So I hope you enjoyed this estate sale episode. I have more videos up of plenty other estate sales that I've been to, so be sure to check them out and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. I would really appreciate that. This way you also will always be notified when I do post a new video. So thank you for watching. Hope you have a great rest of the week and a weekend, whatever you may be doing. If it is treasure hunting, I hope you find what you're looking for. So have a great day and I will see you all next time.